Hey, uh, good morning. It's um, Sunday, I think around December 16th, um, 2012. Okay, I'm in the Six Sigma Master Black Belt class. Uh, uh, Vishwadeep Khatri, Mr. Vishwadeep Khatri is conducting the class. Benchmark Six Sigma. <clears throat> so I took, his, I took my green belt as well as my black belt with him, uh, with him back in 2008 and 2010, um, yeah, plus or minus one year. <clears throat> so the basic question is why Six Sigma? Uh, so from my perspective, right, Six Sigma has applications for, uh, even though it started in manufacturing, it has application for almost all industries. In my case, it's essentially IT and marketing because my job involves both IT and marketing of IT. <clears throat> so. Um, from a design perspective, so it's it's relevant for IT process design, which is which is core part of my work, as well as IT service design, right? Both for um, new processes, IT processes, as well as redesign of existing processes, right? Um, you might have a lot of process knowledge, but a client, you might be, uh, you know, I might have a client project where the client is implementing. A process, say patch management, as a as a new process within uh, within the client organization. So they may already have a lot of activities around patch management, but um, they haven't defined it as a process. They haven't viewed it as a process, but this because of its importance uh, for their uh, business and the stability of their IT environment. So they decided to make it a formal process. So they want to design a formal process. Six Sigma applies uh, uh, very much for the process, right? For process design thinking and process design work. Now, in terms of, um, so process design is the first key thing. Uh, in, in IT, we talk about process maturity and process maturity level when we do assessments of processes. And typically there's four levels or five levels of maturity starting from ad hoc um, to defined, to managed, um, and, and uh, the fourth level being measured and optimized, uh, measured and controlled, and the fifth level being actually optimized processes, processes and process activities. But typically, most organizations are level one, level two, or level three. So Six Sigma uh, will help in <clears throat> not only designing the process, uh, but also in uh, improving the maturity of the process after an assessment, after understanding where the process is today within, within an organization, um, coming up with a set of projects to actually move from level one to level two to level three uh, maturity, if the target for that organization is to move to level three maturity. Right? Some organizations want to go to level four. The ROI for level five maturity is relatively low, so very few organizations um, other than IT service providers themselves are at level five maturity. right? <clears throat> So, and then the, uh, the maturity level can vary from one process to another for an organization. An organization might have very, very mature, uh, say, incident management process, but may not have very mature um, config management or other processes. So Six Sigma uh, essentially will help with both the process design as well as uh, process improvement through the different stages of maturity of IT processes. The same concept obviously applies for IT-enabled business processes also. But uh, that is not the focus of my work. The, the, my focus is primarily in the IT process domain. With regard to services, IT services and IT enabled services, IT services examples are messaging as a service. So Google Mail could be is an IT service. Google Docs is an IT service, for example. Or Lotus, um, Lotus Notes is an um, IT service. Lotus Live is an IT service. Um, IBM, uh, uh, since I work for IBM. And, and, and so uh, these are IT services, IT enabled services, uh, IT enabled business services would be a hotel reservation system. So we are here at the Westin um, in Mumbai um, and, and they have a hotel reservation system, Starwood, uh, Starwood preferred guests and uh, Starwood um, reservation system. So that would be an IT enabled uh, business service, right? So uh, most business services are IT enabled. It's a question of the level of IT enablement, right? So the higher the IT enablement, the, the, the stronger, you know, the more confident we can be in terms of saying that that is an IT-enabled business services. So with, with regard to service design also, whether it's a new IT service or a new IT-enabled business service, Six Sigma obviously plays a very important role. 
uh, and uh, as well as for um, a service improvement, right? The same thing as a process improvement. Now, in my experience for the last, um, I guess I've been applying Six Sigma, what we call analytical tools within the Six Sigma framework, which came from multiple sources, right? From academics, from um, uh, statistics, from technical analysis, from uh, quality, uh, quality management programs and different areas. Um, I've been applying them for, um, uh, for, for uh, as part of my work in terms of writing papers and, and, and uh, um, as well as in projects. But after, after Green Belt and, uh, and Black Belt and, and now Master Black Belt, the level of application has gone, um, has, has, has increased significantly, right? I'm, I'm creating what we call assets, reusable assets. Um, for uh, one example would be uh, quality function deployment, QFT in the IT context, right? Where we are um, using the QFT matrix to think about <clears throat> service design and, and actually translate that into a set of specifications, design specifications um, for the applications that enable the service as well as the infrastructure elements that, in, uh, 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 that enable that service, right? So service, service uh, customer requirements to service and service level requirements to design specifications for the IT infrastructure elements that support that service to, to also design specifications to the processes that enable that service, right? Very interesting work where we also created tiers, right? We said, you know, typically if this is your level of customer requirement, a level of service level requirement for this service quality dimension, um, this is these are the kinds of design specs you're going to see for the systems, the infrastructure elements that enable that service, as well as for the um, processes that enable that that support enable or support that service, right? So we can create matrices. Um, you know, platinum, gold, silver, bronze, however you want to call it, right? And people are doing that a lot. And it can vary from one organization to another. And experience and empirical data is going to tell you whether actually those design specifications are helping you meet, you know, in terms of the correlation that we do um, within QFT, right? So QFT has been an extremely uh, useful tool. Um, uh, and I've applied it for within IT for several processes, including requirements management, service level management, so requirements management being an architecture process, architecture management process, service level management being a service management service management process, and systems engineering, which is also part of architecture, but it's more deeper um, interdisciplinary approach. Um, and, and I guess these fields have already been thinking about using something like QFT or have been using QFT, but we've got a document um, and now that's um, propagated and used by multiple accounts uh, globally. So that is one example, right? So there are, there are dozens and dozens of other examples where we can apply Six Sigma uh, tools within the Six Sigma framework, whether it's DFSS, um, uh, like DMAI-DV or, or uh, um, improvement, right? DMAIC process framework. So uh, several tools, uh, the, the, for example, the uh, event tree now, fault tree analysis, the FMECA, even though these are typically used in the design phase to design for quality, you can also use them as part of uh, problem management for root cause analysis and it's being done. Uh, even though the most common tool there is 5Y, you can have um, uh, other tools to validate and improve the quality of root cause itself, right, root cause analysis itself. So we've done that. So there are several, there are, there are dozens and dozens of examples of applying um, concepts and, and um, uh, tools that are internal that, that, that came from the Six Sigma that are that are part of the Six Sigma framework they may, they might have originated in other spaces right um, and applied that for specific activities for a particular IT process or um, or across multiple processes right so that's that's there but I look forward to actually applying more and more of Six Sigma concepts and tools and analytical techniques including the stuff that I've learned in, uh, in uh, the Master Backpack class, right? Particularly the modeling and uh, simulation for IT uh, processes. Uh, so capacity utilization and performance can obviously use modeling and, and simulation. It's probably being done today. It's, but it, uh, what I've learned in terms of the Oracle Crystal Ball tool and multiple other tools, how we can use it for uh, doing better capacity management, better predictions uh, with regard to capacity needs um, based on business service and resource uh, demand and utilization. So th th that is one area. Similarly, uh, modeling, what, what we've learned in terms of modeling here can be applied for availability modeling, right? So it's already being done. 
reliability block diagrams and, and um, reliability modeling. Um, and now I can think about creating new models for um, uh, service availability management. Um, and and um, uh, 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 so that would be a great way to apply um, uh, modeling, right? For very critical services, I know services, some of the services for my clients, uh, when uh, their outage has a very significant impact on business. Um, and, and as part of my 20, 20 plus years of IT experience, a significant portion was spent actually on availability architecture and availability design. So now I'm thinking more about availability modeling and availability simulation and applying what we've learned here in the Master Black Belt class uh, for IT service availability management, right? Uh, one of the quality processes or one of the, one of the uh, design service design process in ITIL framework, right? So th there are tons and tons and tons of um, uh, ways we can apply uh, what, what we learn within the Six Sigma program um, for IT management, for IT service management, um, IT process management, as well as business service management. So BSM is another domain which actually increases, which actually um, the primary objective being to increase the visibility of IT to business and the visibility of business to IT and relate the two. And, and uh, so again, Six Sigma, con at least Six Sigma tools can be used to, <clears throat> to analyze the data that is, that is uh, generated by TBSM, or t uh, BSM, Business Service Management tool, IBM having Tivoli uh, B uh, Business Service Management, other vendors having other Business Service Management tools. The tools generate a lot of data. Um, and um, uh, the analytics that, that's a part of the Six Sigma program uh, can uh, can uh, can be easily applied for uh, the data that is generated for uh, from TBSM for decision making for sense making decision making and policy making right just like any other and the same thing with BI also right BSM is is equivalent to business intelligence in the business uh, business um, space so BSM is 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 like business intelligence but for the IT service management space and and so <clears throat> the significant amount of data being generated there. Uh, and we can get, get great insights by applying the analytic techniques that's, um, that's part of Six Sigma uh, for, for sense making, decision making, and policy making associated with, um, with business service management, right? But the same thing applies for process also, policy making for processes, not just decision making for processes. Uh, change management, for example, right? IT change management, there are, there are, you can have a set of principles and policies that, um, uh, that can improve um, your organization's capability um, for doing change management well, right? Uh, and do better than the industry overall. So how do you get those policies and principles? It has to be data-driven and, uh, and analytics-driven. So it's not just sense-making and decision-making, but it's also for policy and, and, and policy-making, which essentially means selecting a set of principles associated with that particular process, right? So we're also working on collecting a bucket of principles for IT processes like incident ma management or, or even incident problem or change, these kinds of process, operational processes as well as design processes. Um, what, uh, now, which principles actually make sense based on data? Uh, you know, actually, this principle is helping us improve change management. You know, that kind of capability I'm hoping we'll, we'll have pretty soon. But uh, you know, I can easily see, for example, change windows policy associated with change windows being data driven in terms of success rates associated with changes and the change windows um, uh, data. Uh, the, the analysis of that kind of data to make decisions about. Uh, uh, narrow policies associated with change management, right? So that can have, uh, you know, again, uh, Six Sigma analytic tools can help you there. Um, uh, but so um, there, the applications are uh, enormous. Um, uh, as society moves m more and more away from, uh, um, uh, from uh, you know, uh, individual decision making to group decision making to group data driven analytics-driven decision-making, um, Six Sigma is going to play a significant role in that, right? Not for both public issues as well as business issues in the business context. So uh, I enjoy the class. Um, I, I'm, I'm sad that this will be the last class with um, VK, but that's okay. Uh, it has been a fantastic experience. Um, I look forward to applying more and more of what we've learned in this class uh, to my work as well as um, uh, to my client, um, environments. Thank you.